Chapter 11 is going to be a little interesting to do, considering uh, we're not face-to-face -face and I can't hand you graph paper every day. To that end, I am going to try to sort this out so that we can do this with as little graphing as possible. I'm going to show you an app on your iPad that'll let you plot points and see some stuff. If you want, I will have uploaded my uh, coordinate plane page master, which is what I run off to make those sheets that have, you know, uh, coordinate planes on both sides. You can print them off and do the graphing if you like. I would recommend it if you have the ability. The practice would be good. It won't be mandatory because I know not everyone's going to have access to a printer. So this will be a little interesting. We'll work it out as we go. In section one, we're going to be graphing equations. I know it's called linear equations. Trust me, some of them won't be lines. So a linear equation is an equation whose solutions fall in a line. When we make an xy table and plot all the points, we get a straight line. It might be diagonal. That's still straight. It won't be curved. Okay. So we're going to create an xy table for each equation using at least five values for x, two negative numbers, zero, and two positive numbers. We will plot the ordered pairs and connect them, and we will then tell if the equation is a line. In sixth grade, and earlier this year, I made you do your xy tables, quite frankly, large. You had to do like x, 2x minus 3, y, and xy. And you had to make it big old beefy table. You don't got to do that if you don't want to. It entirely depends on if you trust yourself to be able to do some math in your head. Now I'm going to let you get away with making literally x, y. Okay. So we have to use five numbers for x. Two negatives, zero, and two positives. My recommendation would be where it makes sense to use those five numbers. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. They're the smallest numbers we can possibly use. So to get the y values, we just have to plug these in. So two times negative two is negative four, minus three is negative seven. Two times negative one is negative two, minus three is negative five, 2 times 0 is 0, minus 3 is negative 3. 2 times 1 is 2, minus 3 is negative 1. And 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 is 1. We will plot these if, you know, you print this out and you've got access to coordinate grid. So negative 2, negative 7 means go left 2, go down 7 from the origin, which is there-ish. Negative 1, negative 5 means go left 1, down 5, which is there-ish. 0, negative 3 means stay in the middle, drop 3, so something like about there. 1, negative 1 means right 1, down 1, and 2, 1 is right 2, up 1. So you'd plot all those, connect them as best you can. And is that equation linear? Yep, that's definitely a line. So real fast, let's say you uh, don't have a printer or whatever. You need a different way of plotting these points. I got you covered. So, on your iPad, there's an app called Desmos. If you open that thing up, you can actually use this. It's just a graphing, I don't want to say calculator, but it's a graphing app. It'll let you plot points, graph lines, all that kind of fun stuff. So we have a bunch of points to plot, negative two, negative seven. So you can literally put in parenthesis, negative two, comma, negative seven, close the parenthesis, and it'll put the point. And you can keep doing that with the remainder of the points. So we had negative one, negative five, we had 
0, negative 3. We had 1, negative 1. And we had 2, 1. Okay. Now, I'm doing this without my keyboard attached. You can absolutely use your keyboard to type this stuff in. What we have here are those five ordered pairs. Can you look at this and tell me that they make a line? I think you can. Okay. To this end, on the practice and on the assignments, I'm probably just going to tell you to give me the XY tables and the yes, no is a line. I'm not gonna ask you to produce for me the graph. I want you to practice at least typing them into Desmos if you're not actually graphing, but I'm not going to make you try to turn that into me. If you do print things out and want to turn them in for me to check, I will, but graphs will not count towards or against your grade. Grades will be based on the XY tables and you telling me if equations make lines or not. So, let's move on to the next example. Y equals X squared. And that's it. Okay, so xy table. Again, use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 where at all possible. The only time that would be uh, not recommended is if you have a fraction going on. There is an example like that. It's the next one, actually. We'll talk about it. So here we're just squaring our x values. So negative 2 squared is 4. Not negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. Okay. I am going to be plotting these as I complete the notes since I do have access to my graphs here. Again, if you don't want to print paper out and you want to plot these ordered pairs in Desmos to see what they do, Feel free. That's why it's there. It's a tool for you to use. So negative 2, 4 is left to up 4. So we're in that neighborhood. Negative 1, 1 is left 1, up 1. So we're something there-ish. 0, 0 is the origin. 1, 1 is right 1 and up 1. Lots of 1s there. And 2, 4 is right 2, up 4. That uh, clearly not really a line. If I try to connect those, it's kind of a U-ish type shape. Okay, so not linear. It's called a parabola. Any equation that has an x squared as its highest term, which that'll make a little more sense in chapter 13, but any equation with an x squared as its highest term is called quadratic and its shape is a parabola. It's kind of a U-shape. For us right now, the key thing is that's definitely not a line. Moving on, we have y equals 2x thirds. So, x and y. Now here, I don't want to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Notice we've got a fraction. We're dividing by 3. In order to make my life easier, I want to use multiples of 3 for my x terms. So I'm going to use negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, and 6. Anytime I have a fraction, I want to use multiples of the denominator. It's going to make the numbers we get to plot so much easier to deal with. So here we're going to multiply and then divide. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, divided by 3 is negative 4. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, divided by 3 is negative 2. 2 times 0 is 0, 0 divided by 3 is 0. 2 times 3 is 6, 6 divided by 3 is 2. And 2 times 6 is 12, 12 divided by 3 is 4. We get our list of order pairs, and whether you're printing this out and pro plotting them properly, or you're popping over into Desmos, we would go left 6, down 4 for our first point, left 3, down 2, the origin, right 3, up 2, and right 6, up 4. 
And those, if we connect them, definitely look like they make a line to me. So yes, this one's linear. And the last example for this section, y is equal to negative 3. So there's no fraction, so I can use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for my x values. And now this is fun for me because it's very, very simple. It's not fun for you because you're going to make it very, very hard. When x is negative 2, y is negative 3. Because y is always negative 3. In this example, y equals negative 3, y is always negative 3. I don't care what x is y is always negative 3. Plot all these points. You should get a set of points that go straight across. Left 2 would help if I plotted the points in the correct places, wouldn't it? Let's erase those. And try doing it right this time. Left 2 down 3. Left 1 down 3. Just down 3. Right 1 down 3. Right 2 down 3. y equals negative 3. We get ourselves a line that's definitely linear. Yep, that's a line. It is a horizontal line. Okay, Something it will benefit you to stick in your head, get it stuck in your head for the next, oh, mm -hmm. four-ish years. If there's no x in an equation, if there's just a y, you have a flat, horizontal line. I'll give you a freebie. If there's no y in an equation, there's just an x, then you have a vertical line straight up and down. We'll come across those later.